Greetings in the name of our risen Lord and Savior. He is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. It's a good reminder every Sunday to say that. We know it to be true. But to hear ourselves say that and to reflect on that is great. I would like to open with a portion of Psalm 46. Psalm 46, we hear the Almighty and Most High God who controls nature. He safeguards our lives. He stands over all the nations, and he makes himself accessible to us. All of that in this short psalm. It says this, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And this final verse, we've heard this before. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen. Amen. It's good to reflect on these things and prepare our hearts for worship. As the prelude is played, Read that silent prayer and prayerfully enter into this time of worship together as a congregation of our Lord. Amen.
please rise for our invocation. Our worship is in the name of the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let every knee bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. The prophet Ezekiel's voice is resonating across the centuries concerning a crisis in leadership. Shepherds are failing to care for their flocks. Leaders are exploiting the weak and driving people away and not looking after them. Merciful God, have mercy on us according to your unwavering love, according to your abundant mercy. Wipe away the burden of our sins and guilt that separates us from your love and one another. You created a resilient earth. You called us to be stewards of your earth. Our world has become fragmented, cracked and broken. We've been broken by false promises, lost relationships, shattered trust. We've become cracked with prejudice, oppression and fear because we trusted men and not your holy power and righteousness. Create in us clean hearts. Place your love in our hearts. Then our life will display your salvation through Jesus. Let us free from our sins. May your spirit enable us to live the abundant life you have for each of us. Hear the promise of our God. I will give you a heart with which to understand that I am the Lord. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. For you shall return to me with your whole heart. God of our salvation, we do not follow the plans of your word. We often turn away from your call to trust you in all things. Pour out your mercy on us, as you showed the mercy to your people of old, that we may turn from our sinfulness and walk the path of self-emptying love made known in Christ Jesus. In the days of trouble, we will trust the wisdom. We look forward to the day when many will say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. For the day will come when he will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many people. They will beat their swords into plowshares. In days of trouble, we will trust your wisdom. If we proclaim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. If the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from death, dwells in you, then the one who raised Christ from the death will also give life to your mortal bodies. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. For we were going astray like sheep, but now have been returned to the shepherd and guardian of our souls. The good news is this. In Jesus Christ we are sought, we are found, we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. Our first lesson comes from the New Testament book of Revelation, beginning in chapter 14. In this book, the Apostle John is writing. He's writing the book of Revelation. He writes what he sees, the Lord showing him. Here, in this passage, we are encouraged, we're warned that we should worship the Lord and Him alone. It's a message we hear all through the Bible, and it's the key to the Reformation. Let me read this. John's writing, Then I saw another angel flying in midair, 
And he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading comes from Romans chapter 3. And the Apostle Paul writes this. He's writing that we are only made right in God's eyes through faith in Christ. This was the message of the Reformation. And it's very applicable today and in every age. The Apostle Paul writes this. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement, through the shedding of his blood, to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then... Is boasting. It is excluded. Because of what law? The law that requires works, he writes? No, because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Choir, please come up and sing for us. It's amazing.
Thank you, choir. Let's rise for the reading of the gospel lesson. In the gospel lesson, uh, Jesus is making a reference to the kingdom of heaven or the rule of God, noting that it has always been subject to violence because of our human nature, not wanting to submit our will to God and his ways. And so he makes a mention that uh, no matter whether it was John who came or whether I came, uh, we just could never satisfy everyone. They still wanted to be their own God. So we read from Matthew chapter 11. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been raiding it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you were willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Whoever has ears, let them hear. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they said, He is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated for the singing of the message hymn. It's a great hymn as we give glory to our God for all that he has done for us in our life and our salvation.
grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us share the text that's printed for us this morning. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of His blood to be received by faith. The event of the Reformation is the center of our celebration today. It is the celebration of our rescue. Rescue. The news media loves to tell us stories about rescue, whether from a deep cave in central Turkey or from a burning car. Today our news media reminds us that there is hope and there is concern regarding the rescue of hostages held by Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Armies are waiting to pounce and negotiations are being tried. Will people be set free? It is a waiting time filled with tension. There are serious world problems in the Far East, Ukraine, the Mideast, in America's streets, on our college campuses. Thomas Solwell, a brilliant African-American intellectual, in 1987 wrote a book called A Conflict of Visions. And he offers a very simple and a very powerful explanation of why people disagree about politics. He said, we disagree because we have a different understanding of human nature. All of the problems are explained by the human desire for power and dedication to false religions. And at the root of all the problems we have, it can be stated in one sentence, and it goes like this. God is righteous, and we are not. God is holy, and we are not. Evil does exist in the world. Can anyone rescue the human race? One group says the human being can rescue the human being with our own goodness. Others rely on God. It's a view and a misunderstanding and a different understanding of human nature. Well, this is our human predicament. Something is wrong between us and God, and deep in our hearts we know that to be true. Something has gone wrong in the world, and we know that, that things are not the way they ought to be. So what is to be done about this great gulf that exists between us and our fellow human beings and our God? How can we be rescued? When Adam and Eve gave in to the suggestion of the serpent and tasted the forbidden fruit that God told them not to eat of, they were overwhelmed with guilt. And so they went into hiding and they scurried behind some bushes because they were filled with guilt and fear. Their perfect world had collapsed like an accordion. And on their own, they could not bridge the gap. It was their creator who rescued them and he came and called them and promised a savior. The greatest human need is to be loved and to be accepted. We need to know that another human being loves us, accepts us, and a hug is always reassuring. The great human need for acceptance also applies to our relationship with God. We want to know, how can I be sure I have been accepted by God? How can I have peace with God? Well, that was Martin Luther's soul search. He was overwhelmed with the burden of his sin and his guilt left him separated from God and he needed to be rescued. And so during the years from 1505 to 1508, he tried to do that himself. He entered the Augustinian monastery in order to please God and join the monastic life. He dedicated himself to serving God. He tried everything the church of his day offered. Prayers, monastic vows of poverty, religious pilgrimage to Rome, even a beating himself, all in attempt to find peace and acceptance with God. But the more he sought to live a holy life, the more he realized that his sin was overwhelming and his guilt was unbearable. He knew that within his body there was a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde. 
He was alienated from God. He was cast out of God's presence like Adam and Eve. And you could catch the feel of his alienation, that emotional struggle, by listening to the words of one of his hymns, Dear Christians, One and All Rejoice. He wrote, Fast bound in Satan's chains I lay, and death brooded darkly over me. Sin was my torment night and day, and my life became a living hell. God is the one who rescued Martin Luther by having him teach the Bible at the University of Wittenberg. So he taught the Psalms, and he taught Galatians, and he taught Romans. And then all of a sudden his heart was set free, and then he writes, either sin is in you, lying on your shoulders, or it is lying on the shoulders of Christ, the Lamb of God. Now, if it is lying on your back, you're lost. But if it's resting on Christ, you are set free and you are saved. So now choose what you want. The Apostle Paul wrote, you see, just at the right time, while we were still sinners and powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. And since we have been justified by his blood shed on the cross, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Christians in all denominations are forever indebted indebted to Martin Luther because God used Martin Luther to rescue Christianity from false doctrine and theology. His work, his books, his translation of the Bible all brought Christianity out of the dark ages and the truth of Jesus' words that had been lost were restored. You see, God knew our human state, and he worked within the history of humanity ever since the fall of Adam and Eve to bring about his, his son's birth and death and resurrection, and then through history, working with Martin Luther and other reformers. Death became a reality in the world, and no one escapes. So how do you find peace? It makes people worry if they don't know how to please a righteous and holy God. It was the discovery of God's grace that restored peace in Luther's heart. I love this passage from Hebrews. It says, Since the children have flesh and blood, Jesus also shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Jesus takes the fear away. In the 14th and 15th and 16th century, Christianity had simply lost that understanding of God's grace. Very few people could read until their printing press. The Bibles had to be hand copied. They were usually in Latin. Luther and his contemporaries grew up in a religious world where they lived with an angry God, and they could only hope that you could get to heaven, but you're never really sure. On October the 31st, 1517, Martin Luther nailed his 95 Thesis to the castle church door, and the Lutheran Reformation began, and the Reformation that was in his heart became public knowledge. Luther called justification the chief doctrine of the Christian faith. It's so important, unless you understand that doctrine, you really don't understand Christianity. The word justify means to declare righteous. Romans 8.1 Paul says, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Justification means the sinner is declared not guilty in the eyes of God because God has transferred the perfect righteousness of Jesus on the cross to all who now stand under the cross and place their trust in Jesus. It's a miracle of grace. Guilty sinners are forgiven. We are pardoned declared righteous because of what Jesus did on the cross, and then he rose from the grave. God rescued Martin Luther, and God has rescued each one of us. And as uh, Pastor Jim said, we now as a congregation have an opportunity to rescue a child uh, through Beyond International, which is an orphanage in Guatemala that was created by a Lutheran church in Hood River, Oregon. And over the past several weeks, we've been providing information about that. In the past year, Child Beyond rescued a little girl named Mirna. She was found on the border between Mexico and Guatemala. Some immigrant traveling through just left her there, abandoned her. She was about six months old, wrapped in a tattered blanket and abandoned. 
She was malnourished and dehydrated. It took eight months in the children's hospital to bring her to full recovery. And now Redeemer can rescue another orphan who was also abandoned by her family. Her name is Valentina. She suffered from pneumonia and malnutrition when she arrived at the orphanage. If you have chosen to help Valentina and Child Beyond International, it'll simply continue to provide you with prayer concerns and requests. And so we encourage you to continue to pray for her. We'll receive updates on her health and how she's growing. And next year, God willing, Vicar Wright will be able to travel to Guatemala again next year. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians 2.10, We know that good works are necessary for Christians to do. God has created good works for us to do that he's prepared for us in advance. But in order to get to heaven, neither good works nor good character is going to open the gates of heaven. Only God's grace. So how can we get to heaven? Well, it's very simple. Just believe that Jesus died on the cross. Accept the work that's already been accomplished at the cross. Accept the goodness of Jesus. That's the easy, simple thing. There's nothing easy about the cross, though, on which Jesus died. The cross was heavy. The blood was real. And the price to set us free was extravagant. And God paid that price so that we could be rescued. And Scripture has proudly proclaimed, By grace you are saved through faith, not by anything you can do. It's the bottom line of what we're celebrating today on this Reformation Day. By grace we have each been rescued. We have been saved through faith in Jesus. That's the unchanging gospel message. We've been saved by Jesus. Matthew now records what's going to happen in the days to come and the future. Yes, nations will have war and that will continue to be so. It's always been. But Matthew then records that in the end, at the final judgment against nations, Jesus will come and they'll be rejected. And the Son of Man will come in His glory. And all the angels will come with him, and he will sit on his throne in glory. And all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will then separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. To those on his right, he will say, come, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the beginning of time. I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. By sponsoring Valentina through Child Beyond International, we as individuals and as a congregation are doing a good work as we help to rescue one tiny abandoned child. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of these least little children of mine, you did it for me. So today on Reformation Sunday... We are remembering our Lutheran heritage, and we'll celebrate, you know, a little sausage, a little beer, and, you know, all of those good things that people have brought. On this Reformation Day, we remember that God's grace has rescued us, and we remember that God rescued Martin Luther so that through his work, the church would be rescued. May the Lord keep us steadfast in his word and curb those who by deceit or sword would wrest the kingdom from his son and bring to naught all he has done. Amen. Amen. Let us sing the hymn that's printed for us as we receive the offerings.
please rise as we share our confession of faith together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, you have set us free from sin by the blood of your Son. Grant that we would love you with all our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind, and that we would love our neighbor as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you alone test all hearts. Bless those who bear your gospel, that they would speak not to please, men, but to please you. Preserve them from error, and grant those who hear they would receive it as your word, working life and salvation in them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our O Lord, you are a stronghold for the oppressed and the orphan. Remember those who put their trust in you and who suffer for the sake of Christ. Give them comfort and strength to withstand all trouble and preserve them in the joy of your salvation until your deliverance comes. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you do not forsake those who seek you. Look with kindness on all who cry to you for help and deliverance. We think especially of those printed in our bulletin, including Harold and Pam and Helen and Bob and Tom and Lovita and Winnie Norma, Beanie, Heather, Bill, Barbara, Bennett, Nenglo, Andrew. Restore them, Lord, to soundness and strength according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Lord, we thank you for those who feel called by you to be a first responder. And we pray for those in our congregation, Lord, who have family members who are serving, including Chris and Tate. Ryan, Jesse, Zephing, and Daniel. Keep them, Lord, from harm's way, but give them words to share the faith that they have in you with those around them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Oh Lord, you command your people to be holy, and you make them holy in Christ. Draw us each into your word to read it, study it, and know you and your heart through it. Lord, in your mercy. In your faithfulness, O Lord, you have delivered your saints into your kingdom. Encourage us to walk in a manner worthy of our calling until we stand with them before your throne. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, I thank you for all that you did through Martin Luther and through the Reformation. Lord, it wasn't him, but it's your word. It's your truth that rang true. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would continue to bring reformation through our land as we look to you and you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. It's into your hands, O oh Lord, that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please be seated as we sing the closing hymn.
peace and serve the Lord.